everyone, today we're going to be working on this DIY Baroque style frame. I have been working on this for just a day or two, um, one day of active work, but it does take a day between piping and drying to get the paint on. So for this project you're going to need a frame. The thicker the better as far as the width of the frame just to make sure you have enough room to pipe your details on. You're also going to want piping bags, but Ziplocs do also work if you can't find them. Decorating tips, again you only technically need one, but more is better, as well as an implement that you don't care for because it's going to get the joint compound on it and you might not be able to get that off again. Now uh, what I am showing right now are the rough doodles I made as far as references off the internet that I'm going to want to pipe on my frame. As far as my mistakes that you can learn from here is take out your glass first so you are not caught being reflected in the glass as you film. Uh, this is the joint compound. It's kind of like a thick putty. Um, the directions on the side say you can thin it out a little bit but I found that I didn't really need to to do what I was looking to do. I just went straight from the bucket. Um, the first tip that I'm using here is called a rose tip and it is a longer tip that's thinner on one side and thicker on the other. Now um, I do have some, I do have a lot of cake decorating experience just because I've worked in that environment as well as pretty much grown up around it. Um, so I didn't have to watch any tutorials as far as trying to figure out how to make the shapes that I wanted to make, but if you're not familiar with cake decorating, please do look them up. They're really helpful. So a lot of people say to cut the tip off your bag first, but I find it a lot more helpful to cut it out after so I'm not having to worry about my filling spilling out the end if I'm squeezing on it too hard. And please excuse the <laughs> jack-in-the-box sippy there. Uh, now I have just put the joint compound in the piping bag and fitted it with my tip, which you have to do before you put the joint compound in. And now I am going to begin piping the designs that I am wanting on the frame. Uh, it is always good to kind of get a feel for any new material like I never piped with the joint compound. I didn't know how hard it was going to be to squeeze or how messy or neat it was going to be. So that's what I'm doing here is testing out the tip and the compound together just to kind of get a feel. Although um, I will tell you and I demonstrate it a little later in the video, don't be too scared to just kind of experiment on your frame as well because it's really easily removable. If you do mess something up, you can just scrape it and start over again. Now, uh, I just picked a couple of random designs that I found that I liked. Uh, I didn't really model it after anything that I was seeing online, but you certainly can. Uh, if you wanna look up like Baroque frames, there are a ton of references that you could model your project after. I personally just decided to look up Baroque filigree and pick and choose which elements that I wanted to use and kind of fit them together how I see fit. Now um, you do see me wiping off my tip here quite often and that's really helpful as far as ensuring that you're going to be keeping neat, tidy shapes on your frame which is definitely something that you want. Um, feel free to do that anytime you want, um, anytime you feel like you just want a little bit more control over the tip. Uh, right now I am switching to just a medium round tip, uh, nothing special, just round. Um, you can also accomplish that kind of tip with just cutting the corner out of your piping bag or Ziploc, which I do later on in the video to make a smaller round tip. Um, I also found, because I do frequently get interrupted during the middle of my projects, just because I am a stay-at-home mom, that this joint compound does stay uh, moist and malleable in the piping bags. Um, I What I did was, when I had to take a break, I stuck 
my piping bag into a, another piping bag that was unopened just to kind of try to keep the tip um, moist and not dry out the tip and have a big clump in the end of my piping bag. Now another thing I wanted to mention is that I didn't sand or prep or anything on this frame. I just went straight in with the joint compound mostly because I didn't really mind if it didn't work the first time and I'd rather attempt to be lazy and it work or not work and then have to go in and do it the long way. That's just my personal <laughs> style with things, but I mean, I haven't had any trouble with it sticking or staying on even after the spray paint application. So if you want to prep your frame at all, then by all means, go ahead. And most of this is just going off of the rough sketch that I drew on my post-it. The great thing about this is that you know, you can use a reference, you could even not use a reference if you wanted to, but even if you do use a reference, don't feel super, like, claustrophobic and anxious about following it exactly. Mostly because nobody but you knows what that reference is. Nobody's going to know if you messed it up or if you do it exactly the same. It's still going to be pretty, it's still going to be cool, so, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't get too in your head about it, just kind of go with the flow and make it work as it goes. Now, one of the things that I did make use of here to smooth out the leaves, because I wanted the texture to just be a little bit smoother, is the corner of the piping bag that I had already cut off. Now, um, I just used this because it was laying there and it was a smooth surface. Um, you could also do this with a small metal spatula. You could do it with um, I believe you could probably do it with a paper towel in your finger. Anything that's smooth enough that it's not going to leave its own texture behind in the molding compound, joint compound, excuse me, that that should work. I just happened to use this because it was already there at the station. So the whole reason I decided to do this was because I am currently redecorating my um, bedroom and I think redecorating is probably the wrong term. I haven't really decorated it at all since we moved in almost a year ago and that's mostly because it was an apartment and I didn't want to like get too attached to anything or put up anything that was possibly damaging. I'm not sure exactly what my thought process was. Basically, I had all these plans for my house in the far off future someday, but I couldn't really apply those to an apartment in my head until recently. So I've decided to do my bedroom in pink Baroque inspired fashion details, um, as well as flamingos because they're pink and really adorable. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've actually had to compromise a little bit because obviously um, my master sleeps there too and so he's like I really don't want to live in a completely pink room even though he said I could have a pink room of my choosing I just happened to choose a bedroom <laughs> uh, so I compromise and uh, it's going to be pink and gray which is awesome I'm really excited about that as well Obviously, I would have preferred, like, all pink, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, so, the, this frame is the only one that I have actually done so far, as far as the custom work with the piping. Um, you can do this on picture frames. You can also do it on furniture. It's super versatile. As long as you're able to get the jo uh, joint compound to stick, you can do this. I'm planning on doing it to our end tables that we currently have. They're just big, square, really boring looking end tables that we've had for like a couple houses now. We got them for free somewhere, I just don't remember where. And um, I'm going to be doing a Baroque like circle frame on the top of them so like our things on our end table can sit inside it. And then I'm going to paint mine pink, then I'm going to paint his gray, 
and I think it's going to be really, really cool. Um, uh, but I also have been collecting picture frames from uh, both a rummage sale that I went to today, as well as from my grandparents' uh, things that I'm still helping my mom go through slowly but surely as I grow interested in this or that. My mom's like, oh, you know, they left behind something like that. You should come look at it. Or, oh, there's lots of picture frames over here. You should come look at them. So that's what uh, her and I spent an afternoon doing recently was going through a bunch of um, picture frames they had up in their house and going through the pictures and seeing if I wanted any or um, anything like that. Mostly they were of like really obscure relatives that I really don't speak to very often and they were really old pictures. So I didn't really have any interest in them, but um, I did hijack a lot of the frames, um, mostly because a lot of them had some kind of like Baroque inspired look to them that I thought were cool in one way or another. Um, and so I've been painting a lot of those pink in preparation. I haven't actually put anything up on my walls yet. I've just been like preparing. I also have this little um, jewelry holder that my grandma, my other grandma gave me. Um, a while ago to display jewelry because I was selling it and it's like this little miniature mannequin wrought iron kind of design and I painted that pink and it's turning out really cute. Um, I tried to paint it pink the first time when it was kind of raining because I was impatient <laughs> so it's not quite there yet. It's mostly covered which I was actually really impressed about but uh, I definitely do need to hit that with another coat. I'm hoping to be putting up my frames soon, and when I do, I definitely will be sharing either through a room tour here or on my Instagram, so you should definitely check that out and uh, give me a follow. So basically, like I said, this only took me one afternoon as far as the actual piping was concerned, um, and then I let it dry for a day, and then I went out back and spray painted it. Uh, when I was sure it was dry, just to make sure there wasn't any, like, accidental, um, moist, moistening <laughs> of the, uh, joint compound. And I actually got this idea from Pinterest, um, I'm not exactly sure where, but that's where I got the joint compound suggestion, and, uh, it... I was a little unsure because I was kind of wondering if it would be like silicone, which, you know, is a little bit softer when it dries, but this turned out really um, stiff, which is what I wanted, and, um, you know, I obviously, the thickest layers I laid were on the bottom of the keys here, as well as the top and bottom, and, um, you know, I haven't had any problem with flaking with the thin layers. I haven't had a problem with not drawing with the thicker layers. Um, obviously, your experience could vary depending on how thick or thin that you put this stuff on there or what you put it on there. Obviously, I've only done it on wood so far, but I'm pretty sure you could probably do it on a lot of surfaces. Alright, and after fixing that minor mess up on the flower there, I did take out several of my frames together to spray paint with a nice layer of pink. And this is how they turned out! Aren't they beautiful? Oh, I'm so excited! They're just the perfect color and everything's well covered, everything's well coated. Um, I'll leave a link to the spray paint I used in the description in case you were curious. 
But um, thank you so much for joining me on my first DIY project being presented to my YouTube. Let me know if you like it. Otherwise, have a great night. Bye!